Good morning everyone and welcome to another V Kids Sunday. It's so great to have you all with us and happy 4th of July weekend. I hope that you had a really, really fun time, whatever you were doing. Good morning Hamilton, how are you? Did you have a good 4th of July? Yeah? What did you do? You had a nice, yeah. Hamilton had a nice ice cream outside in the sunshine, so that was nice, wasn't it Hamilton? Yeah, good for you. All right, so we've got lots of fun things for you this morning. All our usual things, we've got our story, we've got our response time, we've got another new character for you to meet. But first of all, we have got the God Spot. So let's head over there and see what's been going on this week at the God Spot. Okay, welcome to the God Spot. And this week I thought it'd be great if I could share some of the things that you guys have been doing for the Love Your Neighbour project that our whole church family has been getting involved in. So just to remind you of what this is about, this is called Love Your Neighbour and it's just great opportunities to show our community how much they're, they're cared for and loved by us at Vintage Church. So you guys have been sending in some of your pictures that you've been drawing for the seniors in our community. So we had these two from Jensen and Ezekiel. Hi Jensen and Ezekiel, thank you for sending these in and we're going to make sure that these get to the seniors and they, I I know that they're going to really bless them so thank you for sending those and we also had Clarice who did a little birthday party for one of her senior neighbours and here's a picture of her she was playing the ukulele and it looks like there's some really nice looking cakes there as well Clarice so thank you for sending that in and please do continue to send in everything that you've been doing. It could be crafts, it could be something from the, our curriculum, or all of these opportunities for Love Your Neighbour, which are available um, at vintagechurchla.com forward slash vkids. You can find out about all the different ways to get involved. So thank you so much for sending those in, and we look forward to seeing more of what you guys have been up to. Hamilton, do you know what time it is now? Yes, it is story time. So it's time for our story and today's story is all about freedom and it's all about how God made a way when that seemed absolutely impossible. So let's find out what the story is today. So our story today is from the book of Exodus and it's in chapters 14 and 15. And you might remember a few weeks ago we were talking about God's people, the Israelites, and how they were trying to escape from Egypt into God's special land which was called the Promised Land. And in our story today, we're with Moses and he's trying to take the Israelites, God's people, out of Egypt into the promised land. But here's the problem. The Egyptian people and Pharaoh wanted to get the Israelites back to be their slaves. So they were trying to escape out of Egypt, but the e Egyptians and Pharaoh were trying to chase them and take them back. But Moses knew that God had a plan. So he continued to take the Israelites, to take them through the land, but then as the Egyptian people and the Pharaoh was chasing them, they came up against a huge sea, which was called the Red Sea. Now the Red Sea was really, really wide and it was really, really long and they didn't have a boat and they couldn't swim across it. And it seemed like, what were they gonna do? All they did was panic, but Moses said, God has a plan, God will make a way. And then a really strange thing happened. A pillar of smoke appeared behind God's people, behind the Israelites, so that the Egyptians couldn't see them. And then God sent winds and these winds blew across the Red Sea and the Red Sea parted and there was water on either side. And then there was a dry pathway that went all the way across the Red Sea. So God's people could walk on dry land all the way through the sea. But what about the Egyptians who were chasing them? I hear you ask. Well, the Red Sea, when the Egyptians tried to follow them, the sea fell back in and so that they couldn't follow them. So God's people made it through. So when it seemed like there was no way, that all was lost, that there was nowhere to go, Moses knew that God had a plan and that God would make a way and that the people, God's people, the Israelites, would make it into freedom. What a fantastic story! And Hamilton, I know that you would like that story because I know that you don't like getting your fur wet, do you? 
Yeah, I know. So now we're going to head over to Professor Bonkers, who's in the science lab, and we're going to find out a little bit more about that story. Over to you, Professor Bonkers. Hello, it's Professor I.B. Bonkers here with you again. Good to see you all. It feels like it's been ages. It's only been a couple of weeks, though, I think, but it's great to have you all here. Yeah, thanks for giving me a wave there. Thank you, saw that. Right, so that story about how Moses led the Israelites into freedom and how the Red Sea had to part. I mean, that must have been a really scary moment. They had the Egyptian army behind them. They had the massive Red Sea in front of them. They had nowhere to go, did they? But God made a way. Where things seemed impossible, Moses trusted God. He knew it was going to take him into the promised land. Everyone must have thought they were doomed. But then the Red Sea parted and they walked through on dry land. Amazing. And it can be like that in our lives, can't it? Sometimes we don't know where we're going, but God can lead us to really unexpected places. And I was going to do an experiment for you with water. You know how I love doing experiments with water. I do it all the time. I was going to do an experiment to show you how sometimes if you trust that something's going to happen, then you might end up in an unexpected place. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got my water here, a piece of card, and a cup. Okay, so I'm just going to pour the water into the cup. If you want to, you can just pour it straight from the tap. So I've poured some water in my cup there. Can you see? I've got some water in there. Now I'm going to take my piece of cardboard. Now that's just going to go over the top there, over the top of the glass. Now this is where the, the trusting comes into play. So I'm going to turn the cup of water over like that. There we go. So can you see I've just got the water, I've got the cardboard holding the water in like that, yeah? Now, what we're going to do, now this is where if, you, if you've got a willing volunteer, someone to help you, then this is where they're really going to have to trust you with this. Because what I'm going to do is we're going to, we're going to try and put this, I'm going to take my hand away. You could do this holding it over someone's head. I'm going to take my hand away and then put it over my head just because can't really stretch and do it at the same time. So, here we go. I'm going to take my hand away. Can you see that the water isn't coming out and the cardboard is just staying where it is? And I can hold it over my head. I'll shrink down a little bit. Ah! But it's not coming out, is it? What an unexpected outcome. So, it's just like in our story. If you didn't try this with someone in your house, you can tell them it's about trusting you. They can tr and then it's going to be unexpected. The unexpected thing here, the unexpected place we're in, is the fact that I'm holding this above my head and the water isn't coming out. So, that's just a little example of how things can end up in a very unexpected place, which is what has happened here, hasn't it? Amazing! Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. Don't forget to always ask before you hold a cup of water upside down over someone's head. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye! Wow, thank you, Professor Bonkers. Now we're going to head over to Hamilton, who's going to tell us about our memory verse, and then I think he's going to introduce another new friend to us as well. So let's see what our memory verse is for this week. Hello everybody, good to see you all again on another V-Kids Sunday. How are we all doing? Good, good to hear it. Okay, it's time for our memory verse now, hooray! So our verse today comes from 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17 and this is what it says. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Wonderful. And now I'm going to hand over to my friend, Captain Carrie, who's going to tell us a bit more about what this means to us. Over to you, Carrie. Hi there, my name is Captain Carrie and welcome to Bathroom Bay. As you can see behind me, I have a fleet of ships that's getting ready to launch at any moment. But before they do, I want to share a quick story with you. So yesterday I was out on the sea and I was reading 2 Corinthians 3.17, which says, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And I thought, 
I don't know what that means. So I prayed and prayed for understanding. And when I opened my eyes, God gave me two word pictures of the water and the wind. Two things that I deal with all the time as a sailing captain. And so I want to share those stories with you. Let's get started. So sometimes in life, the water and the wind are very still. And the Holy Spirit is more like a quiet wind and quiet waters, giving you peace in your heart. And sometimes the Holy Spirit wants to move in your life and wants you to take action. And so that might feel more like a movement. So then you have to adjust your sails and work together with the Holy Spirit as it moves you in different directions. Whoa, it's so windy. It's so windy here. Can you see my wind streamers? They're flying all over the place. If you look at the one with the key on it, the blue one, it's weighted down the heaviest. So it's not moving as much. Same with the crayon. But the one with the cotton swab, it's moving a little bit more. It's lighter. But the one at the very end, the red one, is moving a lot. And it's because it has no weight. So it's similar to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us freedom. So then we can fly and have peace in our hearts and not be weighed down by any worries. But when we carry around fear, when we carry around anxiety, that's like the key and the crayon kind of weighs us down so then we're not able to move as much we're just we feel paralyzed we feel like we can't do anything because we're just so scared so the key speaking of keys the key to it is to allow the Holy Spirit to live in and through you and to work together with the Spirit that produces freedom so that's why the verse says where the Spirit of the Lord is that is freedom and so we want to be like that red streamer that's dancing around on the wind and having lots of fun. So we want to be like that red streamer. So even though the wind is invisible, we can sense and we can feel the Holy Spirit through its movements. Whether it's moving in your heart to do something really kind for someone, or it's giving you peace when you're feeling anxious, that is the Holy Spirit. It's giving you freedom. Freedom from anxiety, freedom from the things that hold you down. So be blessed in that. Well, thank you to Captain Carrie there for telling us all about the Holy Spirit and how we can live in freedom through the Spirit. And I don't know about you, Hamilton, but don't you think that seems like a really good time to do some worshipping, worshipping Jesus? And if you think about it, we've been learning a lot about freedom this morning. We learned about the Israelites and how God made a way for them to get to freedom and how we've learned through Professor Bonkers about trusting. And so we're going to do a new song today, which is all about how Jesus is our freedom. So we've got some new actions for you, and I hope you enjoy this one. So we're going to do a bit of a warm up first. Are you ready for that, Hamilton? And then we're going to get going with our worship. All right, it is nearly time for our worship. So let's have everyone standing up. We're going to do a little bit of moving around to get ready for our worship together. Hang on. Let me just make sure I've got this on. Yeah. Okay, so let's all stand up together, even you who's sitting there on the sofa in your pyjamas. Let's stand up. We're going to stretch up really, really tall, and then we're going to bring our arms out to the side, and we're going to stretch over one way, we're going to stretch over the other way, and we're going to do five star jumps. Here we go. In five, four, three, two, one. Before we start, Professor Bonkers is just going to go through some of the actions to our new song so we can learn a few of the movements. Thank you, Professor. Hello everyone, we've got a new song this week. Amazing! I thought I'd just go through some of the movements. So in the chorus it says, you are, you are, you are my freedom. So you're going to point up in the air. Yeah, that's it. Then it goes, you, we lift you higher. So we're going to lift him higher like this. Yeah, and we do that a few times. And then a bit later on, we do a lot of these movements like this. Yeah, it's a little bit like when you're swimming in the swimming pool, isn't it? A little bit like that. And then we're gonna do a big elbow and then the arms go out to the side. All right, so that's our two main sections of movement. There's a lot of freestyle you'll do. You'll see me doing a bit as well. So let's all have a go together. Oh, oh, oh. 
Just sun down and set me free Everything of this world will fade I'm pressing on till I see your face I will live that you will be done I won't stop till your kingdom come Cause you are so fun being with you all again this morning I hope that you've had a good time and don't forget that you can see all our follow up weekly activities at vintagechurchla.com forward slash vkids and also you can find out on that page all about love your neighbour so let's keep going with our project of loving our neighbours and showing them that we care, showing our community that we care so please do continue to send in all of your crafting projects if you just want to say hello please email us at vkids at vintagechurchla.com we love to see what you guys have been getting up to but for now it's good Bye from me and Hamilton and we'll see you next week. Bye.